Hey guys, we have here the Sony SRS XB13 Bluetooth speaker and in case the battery of your speaker doesn't charge anymore or even if the total playtime of your speaker is significantly reduced by now then it's probably time to replace the battery. And that is exactly what we're going to show you in this video. Now we do gain access to the speaker through the bottom part where the passive radiator is. You would think that there should be some screws underneath this rubber portion here in order to get this part off, but unfortunately that's not the case. So the uh, bottom portion is actually glued onto the uh, main compartment. So we need to force this off and this will take a couple of minutes to do. And I'm using here quite a really sturdy screwdriver to go into the slots for the uh, passive radiator. And here I'm going to pry upwards in this case. And I'm also working my way around those holes here. So I'm prying in each of every hole just a little bit and then I keep going. And eventually the uh, glue that keeps those two pieces together, together is going to uh, deteriorate or give up. And uh, we are able to uh, pop off the uh, portion here with the passive radiator installed into it. So you already can see here as I'm prying the, uh, there's like a little gap opening up between the two pieces and so I'm going to keep going and the entire process for me took about three minutes to uh, pop off this uh, portion so eventually when you do this enough then here that will just pop off like that so you see here the uh, bottom portion that's where the passive radiator is installed into and as you can see uh, we didn't even damage it while we popped off the piece Okay, so now we do have access here to the uh, insides of the speaker. And you should be able to see here three connectors. Uh, the small one here on the side, that's the uh, microphone. And then there's the uh, connector for the battery on the right. So I'm going to uh, remove this one already too. And then the uh, one on the left, that's the one for the speaker. I'm actually not really able to reach that at this point, so I'm going to leave it connected for now. Then we have those three Phillips screws that hold that uh, white bracket in place. But then we find four more small Phillips screws here at the very bottom, here on the sides. So we need a slim and long Phillips screwdriver to remove those. And then at this point we can now remove the uh, white bracket as well as the uh, PCB. That bracket is actually connected to the PCB with like one small pin close to the uh, charging port, to the USB charging port. And while I'm removing it right now, I'm actually uh, bending that pin a little bit. I can uh, show you this in a second where that's located. You see here the charging port and then to the left of it that's where this uh, little pin is and I just uh, bent the hell out of it. So maybe you can do this better. Uh, for my, for me it actually didn't break off, it just, it's just bent. So now we can put those pieces here to the side. And I'm using some uh, pliers, needle nose pliers, in order to pull out the rest of the plastic here. And the uh, driver actually comes with it. So you can see here now the uh, casing, you can look inside, it's all empty. And then we have uh, the wires that go from the driver and from the battery here to the PCB. There's a little clip here on the side that we can pull those cables out of. And then we can really easily remove the driver, put that to the side, and then we have now full access here to the battery. Let me zoom in there so you can see the model number and the capacity of the battery. We can see it's 1400 milliamp hours at 4.2 volts. In order to remove the battery, I'm going to pry this loose here on the bottom end. The battery is uh, glued into position with some double-sided tape. So you want to remove this carefully in order not to uh, damage the old battery. And then when we want to install the new battery, also make sure to use some double-sided tape or some glue just to make sure that the battery never comes loose. And then we uh, route the uh, cables again, route the wires through the uh, little uh, clips here. Let's put that in there. Same with the driver. Make sure to put the driver to the into the correct position here. And then also route the, the cables further up just by clipping them in there. Okay, so now we can already reattach the uh, connectors here to the PCB. So the uh, connectors are idiot proof, so you can't really put them in, in the wrong direction. And also the 
the battery you see on the left side and the speaker is the one on the right side in this case. Should uh, relatively easily slide in there. Next we align the PCB here with the uh, frame, this is white plastic frame. You see the holes in the PCB and those line up exactly with those holes on the PCB as well. Then we uh, also reattach this little white bracket. You see here this rubber piece that goes over the uh, USB-C charging port. So then you already have it aligned right. This portion should be really easy to do. Make sure that the uh, buttons here are also aligned correctly. And then next I already attached the three screws to hold the bracket in place. Uh, eventually I had to remove those later on actually, because they, I didn't get the buttons to uh, function properly. But we're going to see this uh, further on, so now we can uh, drop down this entire assembly into the uh, into the housing. Just make sure you have this aligned correctly. So uh, I'm using the power on button here. Do you see the farthest to the right? I'm making sure this aligns with the button on the outside as well. Should be relatively easy to get in. Just make sure that the rubber piece from that uh, cover for the USB port isn't in the way. And then I'm going to check here now that everything is aligned right by looking into the charging port from the outside and you see the USB port isn't really accessible at this point so something isn't right. So then I decided to uh, tighten down the four screws that were all on the very bottom of the housing. Really helpful to have a magnetic screwdriver at this point by the way. So this didn't really fix the problem so I removed the three screws from the top again and I also pulled out the entire PCB now and I'm reseating, I'm trying to reseat everything and eventually I uh, got it in right. I'm not really sure what the difference is but now if I try to use the buttons, the buttons now function and also the uh, USB-C charging port is in the uh, correct location. And we can also hear the uh, clicking sound again when we press the buttons. I couldn't hear those uh, in my first attempt and at this point now I also Reattach the uh, three screws to hold down the white bracket and now also make sure that you have everything uh, all the connectors back in place so here the microphone should go back in and also don't forget about the connector for the speaker itself and then it just comes to uh, reattaching the uh, cover here with the passive radiator if you take a look at this here you see these little two holes here right next to each other and those are aligning here with these two pins that you see by the USB-C charging port so see these two here, the one in, on the side and here the one on the plastic bracket. So line those two together and then we can just close the uh, cover back up. Just by pressing it firmly on there will of course not keep it closed forever. So uh, you really want to use some strong glue or some epoxy in order to keep the uh, two plastic pieces together. Otherwise they will really easily fall apart again. But even if we do properly glue everything back together, I wouldn't trust the speaker to still be waterproof at this point because we do also have to consider that we removed the driver at the top of the speaker and we didn't do anything special there in order to get it uh, waterproof again. But then we're finally now finished with our battery replacement and uh, I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any more questions or comments then please leave a message below.